In this lesson, we want to talk about how to find the inverse of a function. Over the course of the last two lessons, we talked about how to determine if a function was a one-to-one -one function, meaning for each x it had one y, and also for each y it had one x. So once we understand that concept, if we have a one-to-one -one function, we can then find something known as the inverse of that function. And when we talk about a function and its inverse, they basically reverse each other. So the x and the y values are going to be swapped. So to see that with a very simple example, let's start out with f. And f is just a very simple relation, and it's also a function, and it's also a one-to-one -one function. So it just contains three ordered pairs. So 3, 2, negative 1, 7, and 5, 1. If we say that g is going to be the inverse of f, then all we need to do to find this is just swap the x and y values. So this ordered pair, again, this is x, y. This ordered pair is 3, 2. So down here, when I form this ordered pair, I just swap them. So the 2, that's the y value, will become the x value. And the 3, that's the x value, will become the y value. Now, moving on to this one, I'm going to do the same thing. And I can just kind of draw this like this. I'm just going to swap. So this will become 7, and this will become negative 1. So a y value of 7 became the x value of 7 in the inverse. And then the x value of negative 1 became a y value of negative 1 in the inverse. And again, we're just going to do the same thing one more time. So this will be a 1, and this will be a 5. So we're just swapping the x and y values. It's a pretty simple thing overall. The next thing you're going to come across in this section is they're going to ask you to find the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. So we already know something like f of x equals 3x plus 5 is a one-to-one -one function. Again, we know how to prove that graphically and also algebraically. So once you've determined that it's a one-to-one -one function, how can you find the inverse? Well, basically what you want to do is replace f of x with y. So you're going to go y equals 3x plus 5. So that's the very first step. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to swap x and y. Remember, these guys are going to be reversed. The x values become y values and the y values become x values. So if I swap x and y, you can kind of do it like this. I'm going to say this is x and this is y. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve it for y. So I can just erase this so I have enough room to do this. Let me just kind of slide this up. And to solve it for y is very easy. We subtract 5 away from each side of the equation. We know that this is going to cancel, and I'll have x minus 5 is equal to 3y. And let me erase this, because I like my y on the left. So I'm going to put 3y is equal to, we have x minus 5. I'll erase this now. So how can I solve for y? We have this 3 that's multiplying y. Divide both sides by 3. And of course, we get that y is equal to x minus 5 over 3. So this guy and this guy are inverses. The notation seems a bit different because we have f of x and then y. So to fix that, I'm going to change this and I'm gonna put some special notation in here. I'm gonna say f inverse of x. Okay, so that's how that's read. It's not f to the power of negative one as it appears to be. So if we think about this, the common mistake is you see this notation and you're thinking about exponents and you're saying, okay, f inverse of x is 1 over f of x. No, 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 this is completely wrong, okay? So this is just the way that we notate the inverse, okay? So it's not 1 over f of x. Now, let's think about this for a moment and see how these guys reverse each other. If I think about what f of x does, if I plug something in here for x, well, what happens to it? We multiply by 3. So step 1 is we multiply by 3. And then what do we do in step 2? We add 5. So then we add 5. Okay, so that's the first one. What happens in the inverse? Well, the first thing is when you plug something in for x, what happens? The first thing is I subtract 5. I subtract 5, okay, away from whatever x is. So you see how this is going to reverse what this is. If I add 5 to something and then I subtract 5 away from something, I'm basically reversing that and getting back to where I started. If I started with 3 and I added 5 and then I subtracted 5, well, I'm back to 3. Okay, so if I look at this here, the second step is what? It's going to reverse this multiplication by 3. And we see that once we've subtracted away 5, we divide by 3 down there. So we can put divide by 3. 
So what this is telling me is that when I plug something in for X and I go through the multiply by three step and the add five step, if I take that result and then plug it back in here, it's gonna completely undo what I've done. It's gonna first subtract away five, okay, undoing this, and then it's gonna divide by three undoing this, and I'm gonna get back what I started. To show you this, let's just erase this so we have enough room. Let's just pick one number and we could just choose something easy like two. So f of two would be what? So I'm just plugging in a two for x here, and that would be three times two plus five. Again, the first thing is I'm multiplying by three, three times two is six, and then I add five to the result, six plus five is 11. Okay, so if I take this result and I run it back through the inverse as the input, I'm gonna go back to two. Okay, that's all it's saying. So then f inverse of 11 should be equal to two. So what we would have, we would have 11 minus five, over three. Again, the first thing I'm doing is I'm subtracting away five. I'm undoing this part right here. 11 minus five is six. So now I'm back to that. And then the next thing I'm doing is I'm dividing by three. Okay, so I'm undoing this part right here. Six divided by three is two. So what you see is that in the first one, we have an ordered pair that's two comma 11. In the second one, we've reversed that ordered pair. If I plug in 11, I get back to two. So these guys, again, they reverse each other. So this is the main concept of an inverse. All right, let's take a look at another example. Again, when you get these problems, they're very simple. You just want to start out with taking this f of x and making it y. And then you're just gonna swap x and y. So we can just erase it if you want and say this is y and this is x, and then just solve for y. Okay, so pretty easy. So we're gonna add two to both sides, and I'll just do this over here. We're gonna have x plus two is equal to two y cubed. Now let me erase this, and I'm gonna flip the order because I like y on the left. So two y cubed is equal to x plus two. And then from here, how can we solve for y? Well, we have two steps we have to do. We first are gonna divide both sides by two. And that's just gonna clear this out so I can just erase it. And then the last thing is, this is raised to the third power. I can undo this by taking both sides to the kind of one third power, or we could say we take the cube root of each side. Either way you wanna show that, okay? And I didn't make that kind of long enough, so let me redo that. So what's gonna happen is this will cancel and I can really make this a lot better. So let me kind of slide this down so we have some room and I'll do that properly. So y is equal to the cube root of x plus two over two. And really you just change this at this point, say this is f inverse of x and you're done, right? You found your inverse. So these guys are inverses. Again, you can pick a number, plug it in and run it through here. And then what happens is, let's just do one for example, if I do two, well, two cubed is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 minus two is 14. So this would be two and 14. If I take 14 and plug it in here, I'm gonna get a two, okay? So 14 plus two is 16, 16 divided by two is eight. The cube root of eight is two. So again, you get 14 comma two as an ordered pair here. So again, these guys are just reversing each other. The X and the Y's are just gonna be swapped. Let's take a look at one that's a little bit harder to wrap things up. So we have F of X equals, we have X minus five over two X plus three. So in this case, you have two X's in your problem. So you're still gonna do the same thing. So I'm still gonna change this one into a Y and this one into a Y. So I'll say Y is equal to X minus five over two X plus three. Again, just swap these. So I'm just going to, and let me kind of do this down here. We're gonna need a lot of space for this. I don't wanna erase anything because people get confused on this one. So I'm going to be switching this and this into a Y. And this one, I'm gonna change into an X, okay? So we'll have X is equal to Y minus five over two Y plus three. So, so far, not too bad. Now, let me scroll down and get lots of room. You want to solve this guy for Y, but you have two Y's involved. So what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to get all the Y's to one side, okay? You're gonna have two terms that are not gonna be like terms with Y's in it, and then you have to factor the Y out. Okay, we've already done this earlier in the course, but it's been a while, so you probably have forgotten. So what I'm gonna do, let me just slide this down a little bit. I'm gonna multiply this by this denominator. So two Y plus three, and I'm gonna multiply by the denominator over here. So it's gonna cancel from here. And what I'm gonna have is this two Y plus three times X, which is basically X times two Y. So let's put two X Y. 
and then plus x times 3 is 3x, and this equals my y minus 5. So I've got a y here, and I've got a y here. So I've got to get all those terms to the left. Everything else is going to go to the right. So let me subtract 3x away from each side. And let me subtract y away from each side. And what is that going to give me? Well, we know that this cancels and this cancels. So don't worry about that. We're going to have 2xy minus y is equal to negative 3x minus 5. Okay. So now what I want to do, I want to factor this y out. Okay. So if I do that, I'll have y and then inside of parentheses, I'll have 2x minus 1. And this equals, we have this negative 3x minus 5. So I'm going to run around a room here. So let me copy this. And I'm going to start a new sheet. And we'll just paste this in so we can keep going. So now all I need to do, think about this. Y is being multiplied by this right here. Okay. I know this doesn't look like if we had something like 6y equals 30. And we divide both sides by 6 to say y equals 5. It's the same thing here. Y is being multiplied by this quantity 2x minus 1. So to get y by itself, I just divide both sides by that quantity. And this cancels. And so I find that y is equal to negative 3x minus 5 over 2x minus 1. And let's just paste this in here. And I'm going to erase the y. And I'm going to put f inverse of x. So we have our correct notation. And again, you can choose some point arbitrarily and show that it reverses itself. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to prove that you have inverses. But for now, we'll just show this with a simple point. So let's just go with an x value of 1 again. So f of 1 is 1. Plug in a 1 here. 1 minus 5 is going to be negative 4. And this will be over. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 3 is 5. So you get negative 4 fifths. So the ordered pair here would be 1 comma negative 4 fifths. Now, if I take this negative 4 fifths and plug it in for x, I should get 1 back. So I should get the ordered pair negative 4 fifths, comma 1. So let's try that. So if we had f inverse of negative 4 fifths, this would be negative 3 times negative 4 fifths minus 5 over 2 times negative 4 fifths minus 1. So let's do this in the numerator first so we know that nothing is going to cancel here. You would have negative 3 times negative 4, which is positive 12. So you'd have 12 fifths, then minus 5. You can multiply this by 5 over 5. And basically what you'd have here is 25. So 12 minus 25 is negative 13. So this would be negative 13 fifths. Then down here, 2 times negative 4 fifths would be negative 8 fifths. So this is negative 8 fifths. And then you're subtracting away 1, so you can say minus 5 over 5. Now negative 8 minus 5 is negative 13. So this would be negative 13 fifths. So what do we get? Negative 13 fifths divided by negative 13 fifths. The same non-zero number divided by itself is 1. We know that this would be negative 13 fifths times the reciprocal of this, which is 5 over 13, and it's negative. And again, these cancel and become 1, which is exactly what we said. Right? We plug this in, we got a 1. So these guys are inverses of each other. Again, in the next lesson, I'll show you exactly the process you can use to prove this. 